Okay, good afternoon everyone. Uh, this is Daniel Young, Content Manager with One and One Internet. Thank you for joining us for this webinar. Uh, this webinar is discussing the new web apps that are available for One and One My Website, uh, the Plus and Premium packages. So we'll be giving a general overview of what um, the My Website product is, for those of you that don't know, uh, and maybe a refresher for those of you that do know, uh, such as the process of setting up your website, the basics of how to edit your site, uh, but for the most part, we'll focus on the features that you can add to your website. Um, right now, there's close to 100 applications to improve the functionality and capability of your website, uh, and more are being added every day. Uh, but to save time in this presentation, we'll just go over a handful of the apps. The process of adding the app, each app is the same for the most part, so we'll just stick to showing you the most popular apps from our customers so far. Uh, and we can show you where you can find them and find more of them. Uh, as I said, there are many more for many different types of businesses uh, in every industry. And just to make everyone aware, after this presentation, we'll be posting the recording on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash one and one. The and is spelled out, A-N-D. Uh, you'll also be able to find some of our older webinars on that channel as well. Like, for example, uh, a few months ago, we actually hosted a webinar on my website, but it was more of a beginner's overview of the product um, that some of you might find useful after seeing this as it's more of a technical um, explanation. Um, we'll be presenting for about 40 or 45 minutes today. And we'll leave some time at the end for a bit of a question and answer period. Uh, during our presentation, if you have any questions, you can type them directly into the questions pane of your webinar control panel. We have Jason with us today to help answer as we go. Um, you might see him logged in as Hillary, so if you see Hillary typing back at you, that's actually Jason. But anything that he doesn't get to, we'll cover at the end of the presentation ourselves if we can. Um, or we'll, if we see a good question that he already answered, we'll, we'll answer it ourselves so that everyone can hear it. Uh, once again, my name is Daniel Young, and joining us today is Hillary Close, the product manager for One on One My Website. Hillary, thank you for joining us. Thanks. It's great to be here. Okay, so if we're all ready to get started, let's take a look at the agenda for the day. Uh, just a reminder, you don't need to write all this information down because, like I said, it'll be on YouTube, and we'll actually send a follow-up email in the next few days where you can view the slides and the recording uh, at any time. It usually takes a few days after recording to get it up on YouTube. So like I said, we'll just start off by giving an overview basically of what my website is and how it works. Uh, but then we'll take that a step further and explain exactly what web apps are and how they can benefit your website. Uh, and most importantly, we'll show you a tutorial of how to install and use these apps. Some of them are pre-installed already based on your industry, um, but we'll show you how to add them, how you can search for more, basically just anything that you need you can find in your My Website control panel. Uh, and then finally, we'll go over what we've noticed so far are the most popular apps from our customers uh, and exactly how they might benefit your site uh, based on what your business is. And then, like I said, we'll finish the day off with a question and answer session. So before we get started with that, I just have a poll question that you should see appear on your screen very shortly. So basically, we just want to see um, how many of you already have my website. This will help us kind of how we describe things. If most of you have one already, that's great. Um, if a lot of you don't have one yet, maybe spend more time on the overview. So we'll give a few more seconds for people to answer that. We have about 75% of the votes in. So it's split pretty well. Two-thirds have a website and one-third doesn't. So that's great for those of you that don't have one who want to learn more about it. Uh, you might be interested in our older webinar as well. So like I said, our YouTube channel would be a great resource for you. So we will get back to our presentation. So our next slide will just describe briefly what web apps are. Um, I'm sure some of you have smartphones uh, where you're familiar with the term apps. Uh, these web apps are fairly similar. Basically, they're just third-party applications that you can easily add to your website to enhance its functionality uh, and the usability for your customers. Uh, there are many available, but some of these categories listed here are for online shopping. Uh, these apps are helpful if you manage an online store uh, or if you are trying to sell products online. You can add something like PayPal directly on your website to make payment transfers easier. Um, the, other cat the next category is social media. Uh, so by adding something like Facebook or Google Plus buttons to your website, it allows your visitors or your customers to easily share your content and also to follow your company's updates on those social media channels. Um, obviously, to get the most use out of these apps, you should actually already have accounts with these websites. Um, so you do need a Facebook page already. Um, otherwise, there won't really be anything there when you add it. Uh, the next category is multimedia. These are things like videos or photo albums about your business that you might have online on other sites, such as YouTube. The purpose of these apps is so you can have it directly on your website. For instance, if you had a YouTube video before, uh, you might have sent your customers to YouTube to actually watch the video. So they would have actually had to leave your site uh, to see that. But now it's embedded right on your website, so uh, they don't have to leave your website at all to see 
whatever your multimedia is. Um, another category is communication. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. allows your customers or your visitors to communicate with you through Skype. Uh, one example with OpenTable is if you are a restaurant um, or if you own a restaurant, you allow your customers to reserve seats directly through your website. Um, and again, you need an OpenTable account set up to do that, but um, it's really beneficial for your customers. And then there are other categories. Um, Google Maps helps your customers easily find you. Uh, instead of just listing an address or um, generic directions, it'll actually have the map and they can print out directions directly from Google Maps. So as you can see, there are hundreds of possibilities for your website, each with their own benefits. Uh, it's just a matter of what makes the most sense for your business. So no matter which apps you choose, they are easy to drag and drop directly onto your site, which is what Hillary will show us next. Okay, so let me just briefly just give you an introduction to my website. Since a lot of you don't have my website, I'll just let you know a little bit about, um, you know, what my website is and, and how easy it is to use. Uh, we've actually developed my website for people that don't know how to code or don't know how, or they don't want to hire someone and pay a lot of money to actually have to, you know, set up their website. A lot of times also, we hear from our customers um, that have hired someone to do their website that they can't get back in touch with the person when they want to make changes. Um, so my website is really great because it allows our customers to be able to update their website whenever they want. It's really easy for them to use. They don't have to have any technical experience. Um, and basically when you sign up, you sign up with your industry. And then the really cool thing about my website is that it will give you pre-filled content in your website that is applicable for your industry. So for example, if you have a restaurant and you want to create a website for it, you select restaurant as your industry and then it will give you already pre-filled content for that. Um, which is good because it's, it acts as like a starting point and then that way you can actually adapt it for your, you know, to make it personalized for your own restaurant. So it's really helpful. Um, and we, we already talked about what web apps are, but web apps are really helpful because they can allow you to create content, um, create more content, create more engagement for your customers, and keep your website customers coming back to learn more and more information. So now, as, as Dan had showed you, there's a lot of different web apps that we have in our web app store, and we're adding web apps constantly. Um, again, these web apps are only available for the Plus and the Premium customers, so if you have a basic uh, package, you're not going to be able to access the web apps, so you'd have to upgrade in order to um, to access them. So why don't we just go through um, the web apps, why don't we show you, why don't we log into the website and show you how they work. So basically, if you have a one in one my website already, you will scroll down to the bottom and you'll see this section called login, and you just click in login and you type your password and then you'll be logged into your, your website. Basically anytime you want to add a web app, um, you're going to see the toolbar on your right hand side. And as most of you know who have my website, if anytime you want to make an edit within any of the text, you just click in the box and then you can easily make changes that way. You can also edit your page structure, your navigation, um, by clicking on this. You can change the name of your pages, you can, you know, um, change the order of how your pages appear, um, or you can delete pages. You can also hide pages. This is just a quick overview just so some of you get an idea about, you know, how to use my website if you don't have it. Um, but most of the functionality that you'll find, um, and also inserting any kind of element to your website will be on the right hand side in this toolbar here. So I'm going to start by just showing you um, the insert elements section. And as you can see, it's categorized by basics, multimedia, products and documents, contact and communication, social networks, and web services. Um, there are web apps in every section except for the basics section. So I'll show you when you click on multimedia, you'll see the web apps are down below, and they're categorized under my web apps. Now, as uh, Dan said a little bit earlier, it depends on what what industry you select, um, which web apps will be pre-installed in your web editor. All the web apps that we offer are available to every customer that has a Plus or Premium package, but some come pre-installed based on your industry. Basically, we pick apps that make the most sense for what you're going to be wanting to do with your website. 
If you want to browse the full web apps catalog, you just click on that button, Browse More Web Apps. You can search um, up here by any term. So if I'm looking for uh, something having to do with Google, I would just search it, search Google, and then all of our web apps that have to do with Google will pop up. The other really cool thing is that if you highlight or if you click on the web app, it's going to explain what this will do for your website and it will show you how other people who have used the web app, how they rate it. Um, it'll also explain how you can integrate this web app on your website step by step and also gives you the company, the third party information if you need it. Um, as Dan said also previously, a lot of these web apps require you to already have a, um, an account with them. So, for example, because what you're doing is you're really just bringing content that you have in other places about your business and adding that to your website. So basically, if you have a Facebook page for your website or for your business, um, or if you have a Google Plus um, account for your, for your business, um, those are all things that you want. You want your customers to engage with your, web, with your business and through your website. And by giving them more and more content, that allows them to, um, to, you know, to stay with you longer. A lot of these web apps, like I said, are just going to be in the app catalog. So you may have to just click pre-install or install them, sorry, add to my web apps. For example, if I wanted to add SlideShare, it's not pre-installed, so I would just click add to my web apps. And then that, it will show up in my, um, in my editor toolbar. So like I said, anything you're looking for, you can really search easily. The process is similar for all, for most apps, it's just slight differences here and there, but we actually um, did call out some of the most popular apps from our customers so far. So this is the slide that we showed you before. Um, the ones in bold are actually the top four apps that are, have been added by our, our customers before. So PayPal, Facebook, Skype, Translator, um, those are the most popular, and it actually it's a good example to use because it's one from, from every category. We can even show you YouTube if there's time uh, just to get the multimedia category, but like I said, it's very similar for each one. So um, if we go back to our Chester Brook Cycles website, we can show you how to add those individual, the individual apps. Okay, great. I guess so we'll start with um, showing, showing you how to add a PayPal account to your website. Um, a lot of people, a lot of our customers want to sell things um, on their website, and they want to allow their customers to pay for things through their website as well. So PayPal is a really good way of allowing their customers to buy services from them online. Um, PayPal is going to be located in the products and documents section. As you can see, we also have um, a web app for an Equid store, which is also a way that you can integrate a full online store and accept payment um, through your website. But we're going to just show you really quickly how to install PayPal. So I'm going to go to my buy products section of my website, which I've already set up. Um, and I'm in editing mode now, so I will be able to see this is what my website looks like to you, the, the person who's editing their website. Um, and I'm going to go over to insert elements. I'm going to click on PayPal buy, and then I'm going to just drag it over to wherever I want to place it in my toolbar. Um, now we already have it and then it'll pop up and it'll ask you to fill out all of this information. Um, so basically you'll put in your email address for your PayPal account. Um, we've already put in an item here. It's a bicycle that we're selling. So we're going to name that item and we're going to give it an item number. We're going to add the price and the currency. If you're in a different country, you might be selling uh, with a different currency. We're going to add the shipping cost, the rate of taxation. And then we have a couple of options down below where we can offer various product options. We can show um, a comment field for someone if they want to put a comment in about a product. Um, or we can also show um, credit card logos under that button. Now I'm going to show you how we, um, what our current one looks like. Um, so basically I've enabled it to show the credit card logos just because we want our customers to see which, which credit cards we offer. And this is actually, um, if some of you are wondering why you would use a third party to handle your uh, online store instead of actually doing it yourself, um, if you've actually tried to do it yourself without a lot of expertise or without a, a web, professional web developer 
um, on your staff. Um, it's very difficult and it's actually very, customers have, have a tendency to not trust putting their credit card information to things that they're not familiar with. So everyone is familiar with PayPal, uh, so it's actually easier for you and it's easier for them to just add um, this app onto your website and it makes purchasing things so much easier for everybody. As you can see, when I entered all my information, I also have the option to align um, this web app on the page. So I can just select if I want it to be on the left, in the middle, or on the right. Then I'm going to click Save, and my web app will appear. Now, keep in mind, a lot of your web apps might not um, fully be viewable until you click Page View, because this is how your customer will be able to view it. And this, most people come to your web, coming to your website are not going to be logged in. So this is how it will look. Um, and for example, if someone wants to buy this bike, they click Add to Cart, and then it will connect them with your PayPal account. It'll show them the item that they just that they want to purchase. It'll show them the quantity and the price. And then here's where they can check out with PayPal um, or some other way. So, or they can continue shopping, which is really good. So again, you know, it's really easy to use. All of these web apps are pretty much just a few clicks. Um, like we said, you might need a, an account before you can use some of them, but um, they're pretty pretty easy. I think the next one we're going to talk about is we're going to show you if you have a Facebook page for your website or for your business, we're going to show you how you can add that to your web page so that people can like your business on their Facebook and spread the word about your business. I'm actually going to add it, I think, over here because if I add something on the left-hand side navigation bar, then it'll show up on every page. So again, I'm going to go to edit page at the bottom. Um, I'm already logged in, which is good. I don't have to log in again. And then I'm going to click on insert elements. And since Facebook is a social network, I'm going to click on social networks. Um, and Facebook is already installed because I've used it already. Again, if you're looking for a specific app, please feel free to go to browse more web apps. I'm going to click on Facebook. And then I'm going to drag it over here, right underneath my contact information. And then a, a box will appear again. It's going to ask me what color scheme I want. I'm going to say dark. Um, and then I have three different options. So there's a basic like button, which doesn't take up too much room on your, on your website, where you can just click, um, you can just have someone uh, click the like button if they want to, um, and share your website with their friends on Facebook. There's also a like box, which actually shows um, people that, or I guess photographs that are associated with your Facebook page, as well as any wall posts that may have been added recently. Um, if you select this option, you'll just click the like box, and then you're going to type in your Facebook page URL. So in this case, we're just going to use the one-in-one -one Facebook page because, got it, okay. So, and I'm going to say, I'm, I think I don't want the, since I'm putting it on the left-hand side, I'm not going to put the profile photographs or the likes. Um, so I'm going to click Save. The third option, just really quickly, is a banner for your, for your company. And it'll show you um, a profile photo that you might have for your company Facebook page, your name, and it'll also show you all the people that have liked your page already, which is pretty cool. I'm going to click Save. And then um, there it is. It shows up that this is 101 Internet Inc. And you can see, it's kind of hard to see a little bit, but 8,522 people have liked this. And I can edit this. Um, the really cool thing about this is that I can just drag it down if I don't like it where I put it. Um, I can also drag it over to um, another part of my section, I think, if I want to. Um, I might have to drag it over from here. but um, Or I can delete it if I don't like it. I can move it up and down that way. So it's really easy um, to add these web apps. Um, and again, let me just show you the page view. I think it might look the same for this web app in the page view mode. Um, but yeah, and now that's added. So people can click on the company, and they can go to the Facebook page of your company. Um, and then they can also click like so that they can share it on their Facebook page with their Facebook friends. Like Hillary showed you, there's a lot of options for this, just this one app. A lot of the apps have um, several different versions, I guess, would be the best way to say it. Like this one, we had the option to list wall posts. So if you have a Facebook page and say every day you post your, men your menu for your restaurant or something like that, 
you obviously want to have the yeah. menu on the website, but for example, if you had that and you had the wall being shared, anytime you posted the menu on your Facebook page, it would show up in this left-hand navigation for Chesterbrook Cycles. So um, it just depends on what you want to use it for. Right now, we just have the like button, which is great for quick sharing. If you want to show your friend this brand new 2003 Trail Buddy 3000, $650 is a great deal. Uh, you would just click like and share it with your friends, and you would like the business as well. So I'm going to go ahead now, and why don't I show you how to add a YouTube video to your page. Um, a lot of people um, might have a YouTube page for their business. For example, we have youtube.com backslash one and one for our web for our business, um, where we can share things with our customers and share videos. Like today, we're going to share webinars. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of our customers want to be able to share content, and they want to be able to keep people on their website. Um, instead of sending them to YouTube to a special link. So it's really cool that we allow people to add videos to the website. So I'm going to go to the video section um, of my website, and I've already installed this video. Um, and anytime you want to just make an edit, you would just click in that box. It's really easy. But let me just show you quickly, um, again, where you'd find YouTube. So you'd click Insert Elements, um, and YouTube, again, is under the Social Network section. So we will take YouTube and drag it over. And then the box will show up, and basically you just take the, the web address from the video that you'd like to link it to, and you put that in there, and then you click Save, and it will show up. So, for example, for this video, this was um, the link this was the link that we found online. We clicked save and then it shows up for all of our customers to be able to view it really easily. Um, when they view it, they don't have to leave the page, which is good. And um, it provides more content and more engagement for your customers. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's, and Hillary just mentioned it now, it's, if you were sharing YouTube videos before, um, if you weren't sure how to or you weren't able to embed them onto your actual website, uh, before the customers would actually have to go to YouTube, leave your site to view the video, and then you don't know if they would actually come back to the website, which you don't like. Right. So <laughs> this keeps them on the website. They're seeing these great bicycle videos, uh, getting inspired to get a bicycle themselves, and then maybe they will visit your shop and, and purchase the Trail Buddy 3000. Okay, so the next web app that we're going to show, and again, all of these web apps are our are, are most popular, you, they're our most widely used web apps right now, and that's why we picked them um, to begin with. Um, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to use Skype now. Um, now again, you're going to have to have a Skype account already. Um, and I'm going to add that, I think, to my Contact Us section because I want our customers to be able to contact us. I want them to be able to have all the options to be able to contact me. So um, we already have it pre-installed. Um, but I'm going to go to Edit Page so that I can show you how we can install a Skype button. Um, and I'm going to go to Insert Elements, and Skype will be under Contact and Communication, because this is a way that you would communicate with your customer. Um, again, if it wasn't here already, then you could just go to Browse More Web Apps to find it, and click Install, and then it will show up in your, in your editor toolbar. Once you click Install, um, your web apps will just be in your editor toolbar. You won't have to continue to do that. Um, so I'm going to just click on Skype and then drag it over. I'm going to place it um, somewhere where it's easy to access. And then um, I'm going to type in my Skype name, which would be your, your account that you already have with Skype. You can, again, choose where you want it on the page, how you want it centered on the page. And then you have the option to, to select different buttons, um, you know, whichever button looks best with your content. Um, and then I'm just going to jump into ours really quickly so you can see but um, it's really easy you click save and it's there already um, and it shows up so it's really easy to add Skype and that would give your customers another option for contacting you if they have any questions absolutely and a lot of times customers uh, obviously you want to be more um, reserved with not adding too many apps, but if you if you use Skype a lot and you'll actually be available to your customers calling via Skype, um, it's a great app to use. Uh, just any way you can make your customers' lives easier will 
be, make them more likely to keep coming back to your website if they had a good experience the first time. So it's great. Okay, and so I think our final app for today is going to be, um, I think, is going to be our translator app, which I think is really cool for, for customers that might be conducting business in a different country. So, for example, if you are in Canada, some people actually have, in Canada, there's a lot of people that speak French. So you might, be, you might want to offer some of your pages or all of your pages in French. Um, so we have a really cool app for that. Um, I'm going to go up to insert elements again. Actually, I'm going to, I want to translate my home page because I think that's going to be the page where most of my customers come to um, to begin with. So I'm going to click in insert elements. And um, I'm not really sure where the translator app is, so I'm just going to go into browse more apps. I'm going to type in translator. Okay, and so as you can see, we have two different apps for that. We have a Microsoft translator and a website translator. Um, oh, I've already added the Microsoft translator. I can see that I've already added it with this little checkbox here. Um, if I hadn't added it, then I would see add to my web apps. And I'm going to see, it must be in, let's see if it's in the communication section of my insert elements. Web services, there we go. <laughs> Sometimes it might take a little, you know, poking around to find what you're looking for. Um, so I'm going to take this website translator app, I'm going to drag it over here. I'm going to put it at the top because um, I want my customers to be able to see um, that they can translate it, the content if they want to. Um, so again, you just pick where you want it to be aligned on the page. You pick the, the color. Um, as you can see, you can select a really customized color if you want so that it applies to your company colors on your web page. And then you just click Save. It's really easy. Um, now, of course, this will only be displayed in Page View. So I'm going to go down and click Page View. And then it should pop up, and then the customer will see it when they first come to my home page. And they'll see that they can actually translate this page into all these different languages. Um, there's a lot of different options. Um, so let's go ahead and translate it to French, and let's see what happens. Click the arrow button, and then the customer will see that all of my content on this page is translated into French which is really helpful for customers, like I said. Um, you may choose to have one page that's translated for their customers, um, and then it's really easy for you to just uh, go back to the original uh, language that your website is displayed in, click the arrow button, and then there you go. It's back to the English version. Um, now, you'd have to, if you want to translate your whole website, um, the other web app might be better because that might translate your whole website. I'm not sure because I haven't used that web app yet, but this web app, if you wanted to, you could place it on every page because I don't believe that it, it, it does that um, by itself. But again, it's really easy, so you could just uh, really quickly just place it on every page if you want to. Um, and that's it. I mean, that's really good for customers, like I said, that might have people that they want to communicate with in different, in different languages, and it makes... It makes people coming to your website and interacting with your website. Uh, it makes them. Um, it makes it a lot easier for people that might speak a different language. Uh huh. And just like Hillary said, I mean, a, a lot of a lot of websites here might not have uh, a whole lot of international customers. But if, in case you do, like she said, it might make more sense to just have a section on your website for those international customers where they would be able to use it, this app. That's that's just one example of of a way you could use it. We'll get to the question and answer period in, in a few minutes. Um, in the meantime, I'm seeing a few questions come through about uh, showing examples of specific apps. So if you have any apps in mind or maybe ones that you've seen before that you'd like us to do a walkthrough of, um, feel free to type that in your questions pane and we can see if we can get to that in the question and answer period. Uh, for now, hopefully uh, most of you have a better understanding of what's available to you when you have a My Website package. Uh, utilizing these web apps helps you really add a lot of flexibility to your website and your customers and visitors really benefit as well. Um, it, like I said, before, it, it really just depends on what your business is. There's a lot of different apps that can be a, a, applicable to any kind of businesses. Um, and just as a reminder, these web apps, some of them come pre-installed based on the industry you selected once you got on my website, but you still have access to, to every single app in the marketplace. It's just kind of easy. It's easier for you to see it as your industry once you get in there. 
So I'm sure some of you have some questions. We'll just go back to our PowerPoint very briefly. Before we get into the questions, just want to thank everyone for their attention so far. Uh, we do have a, an online success center. It's more of a resource for small businesses using the Internet, uh, better ways to improve your search engine optimization, improve um, how customers find you via Google, how you can use social media for your business, um, search engine marketing, and everything like that. So it's just success.oneandone.com. Uh, articles are posted almost every day. So check that out if you want to learn more on how to use the Internet for your business. We also have presence on all the social media sites. You've seen some of them as we've added them in the apps. Uh, we have Facebook slash one and one uh, YouTube slash one and one Twitter slash one and one um, So with that said, we can get to some questions. I wrote some down as I saw them coming in. Um, one of them was specific to the Facebook app, so if we could go back to our, our Chesterbrook Cycles page and see if we can play around with the Facebook app some more. Someone was asking if we could show an example of um, showing the wall posts on the page. Because oh, sure. the way we did it, we just had the like button. Yeah. So I think if I did that, I would probably want to put it in the center of my page. Um, so I'm going to actually go to, um, I'll just go to the contact us section. I think there might be more room on that page. Eh, not really, but um, basically what I would do is I would go over to insert elements. I would insert Facebook again. I'm going to go to social networks, drag and drop it over. Um, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it at the top. I want people to see uh, Facebook right away. So this is the way that I would go about adding the wall posts for Facebook. So I would type in my Facebook page again. One and one. Um, and then I'm just going to click on wall posts. And I'm going to click save. And then it's going to show us, um, oh, actually, join us for a free webinar tomorrow. So that's the latest um, post that was posted to our one in one Facebook, our one in one Internet Facebook page. Um, I'm just going to go down to show how it looks to, all, to everybody by clicking Page View. I just want to add that this is, as you're playing with the apps and seeing which, what works for your website, you may find, just like we're finding here, that... Uh, your color scheme for your website might not mesh well with what you decide to add. So we added this the blue Facebook app uh, with a almost matching blue background. So obviously we would want to play around with that and make sure our website looks readable to um, to the users. Yeah, but I mean, so it's just it's really easy. It's only a few clicks, um, and we really encourage you to play around with these apps because. You really can't screw anything up. And if you don't like something, you can just easily click delete and get rid of it um, and start all over. So, um, Sticking with Facebook, someone asked to see the, an example of the banner checkbox. Okay, great. So before we delete so that. So because I already have the Facebook app installed, I'm just going to click on it. And then I can go in and, and edit it. So I'm going to remove the like box, check box, and I'm going to check the banner. Again, I'm going to type in my... Facebook page, um, and then I'm going to, I do want my profile photo and I want my name, so I'm going to click save. And that's how my banner will look. Um, so it's really, really easy, it's just a few clicks, like I said. Mm -hmm. A lot of the apps have different options like this, it just depends on what works with your website, what looks the best. Mm -hmm. um, of the three we saw, that we still have the first one in our sidebar there, so I think that one works best with with our design. and might something else might work better for your design. So it's just a matter of seeing what works and tr and trying it out. Okay, some of these other questions, uh, a couple video related questions. Uh, one easy one is if we have a Vimeo app available, which I believe we do. And just to reiterate, to to find an app, all you have to do is search um, for what you're looking for, browse more. Yeah, so I'm going to go type in Vimeo up here. You can either search or just go through um, go. multimedia. Yeah, so here's video, Vimeo, and this is an example of one that was not already installed in my editor. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to my editor toolbar. And then, see, it's going to show up here. Um, so if I wanted to add a video, I'm going to go back to the video section of my page or my website and then go into Insert Elements. I'm going to grab this here and I'm going to place it wherever I want to put it on my page. And then it'll ask you for your user ID. Um, 
it'll ask you for um, if you want to select your subscriptions to, to display or if you want to select a specific channel, a group, an album. Um, you can select slideshow. Um, so I can't fully show you how it works because we don't have any content. But, you know, as we said before, you can really play around. There's a lot of different options here, which is cool. You can change your color um, to match it with the website. And then once you put in all your information, you click save and it would appear on your on your page. Okay. Uh, let's see some other questions. Uh, someone asked us if we could show what Google Maps looks like and how exactly we would sure. use that. I yeah. think we actually have that on our site already, but yes. we can we can do a quick walkthrough. Great. So we already have a location page, um, and this is what it will look. This is what it looks like when it's installed. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete that really easily, just so I can show you how easy it is to get rid of an app if you don't want it there anymore. Uh, I'm going to go over to Insert Elements again, and I believe that Google Maps will be in Contact and Communication. Oh, no, they're in Web Apps or Web Services. Okay, here we go. So here's Google Maps. I'm just going to drag it over to the page. I want it to be above my Google Plus um, section. And there's all kinds of, um, again, selections that you can choose. Um, you can also allow customers to be able to get directions to your, to your place of business if you'd like by clicking on um, this box. Um, I'm going to type in our address here at 1 and 1, which is um, Road, 7, oops. Sorry about that. And then I'm going to search for that. I'm going to add that destination here. Um, and then I'm going to click Save. And then my, my map will show up with where we are located. Um, let's go to Page View. That way we can show you how it will look for your customers. And then the customer um, can see exactly where you're located, which is really easy. And that is the, that's the Google Maps app. Okay. Um, just seeing a few, few questions coming in about uh, where this presentation will be available, just to reiterate, it usually takes to, to convert the video and upload it to YouTube. And our YouTube channel, again, is just youtube.com slash one, number one, A-N-D, number one. So one in one. Um, but we'll also, we'll send an email to everyone that attended the webinar as well. Yes. Um, letting you know when it's available and when you can go find it. Yep. So. Even those who registered, I saw someone said they were hoping to have someone watch it with them and they weren't available. Um, even if they registered, they'll get that email with, with all the information. So there's no, no worry about not being able to, to review this or any of our older webinars. Um, some more basic, just my website questions. Um, one person was asking if there is a limit to how many apps you can add on your website, uh, which the answer for that would be no, but you want to kind of look at it from a design standpoint. Um, in some of our examples, you just saw us adding apps and adding apps just so we could show you how to add them, but it wasn't, once you got so many, it was starting to look a little bit cluttered. Um, so there's no official limit, but you, you might want to limit yourself uh, just to what you think works best for your customers, maybe just a few per page at the most um, would be the probably the best answer for that. Uh, and then someone was asking if more than one person would be able to edit the same website, for example, several employees of the same company, which... Yeah, I mean, as long as you provide your password to them, um, they would be able to edit your website. Um, we don't provide additional users, um, not yet anyway. Hopefully that's something that we will introduce soon. Um, but right now, it's just a matter of you providing the password, and then anyone can edit, edit your website. Um, is it possible to transfer an existing website into the My Website package? Yeah, so... Basically, it's really easy. You could do it yourself, or we do have a site transfer service. Um, so we actually have a team of people. Um, if you decide to purchase uh, my website with us, they can help you um, transfer your website over. Um, and the really cool thing is they will do their best to keep it as, you know, looking exactly the same with the same color scheme and, and having the same functionality as, you know, as your current website has. Um, you can actually just call our regular customer service line, which is on our um, website. 
Um, and you can just ask for the site transfer team. Um, anyone will be able to transfer you. Um, so that, and that's free of charge as well. As long as you buy my website package, um, that's a free service that we provide because we definitely want people to have the option um, to get started easily. Um, and, you know, some people are a little intimidated. And if they already have a website, they might be hesitant to feel like they have to start all over. So that's, you know, we're here to help with that. Um, so feel free to call us if you, if you want help doing that. Okay. Uh, one of the questions early on was, uh, if you do have the Plus or Premium package and you have the, the web apps available, is there an additional charge for adding any of them? No, um, all of our web apps are free. There may be some that have options. Um, I, I believe actually our Equid app, um, which is an online store app, which allows you to add an online store to your page, they have different options. So depending upon what account you have with them, um, you may have to pay for their services, but then you can add it to your website. So. Um, all of our web apps are free. There's no additional charge, but like we said, they're only available with the Plus and the Premium packages. Okay. One question was, actually I saw a few people ask this, uh, if there's an app that someone wants and it's not actually listed in our marketplace, what can they do? Uh, the best answer for now is just that there's more apps being added every day. Like I said, there's close to 100 now, so if there's a, a very popular um, third-party website, it's there's a good chance that it'll eventually be added. Um, we're always, it's always we're being always, developed. We're always adding more apps. And then we also just recently added a section where you can provide feedback for the apps. Um, I believe it's in the browse, it's in the, um, the web app catalog. I'm trying to find it. Let's see. It's at the bottom, actually. So if you do want to suggest some apps, um, that you know for us to to include in my website you can go ahead and you can actually click this link it's at the bottom of the the um, web apps uh, catalog you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom but then you can put in your name and you can put in your message so you can say whether you like them um, you can recommend some new apps for us to offer um, and then click send and then we'll get your feedback okay uh, I think I only have a couple more that I noticed um, there were specific to uh, particular apps. Um, one of them was the question with the YouTube app, uh, whether or not they can list videos in the single video screen that we showed. Um, I think I know what they mean, but basically I think the best way to do that would be once you finish watching a video on your website, uh, at the end it usually comes up with related videos or other videos from your channel. So if you have a YouTube channel, um, for instance, we had the bicycle video. Mm -hmm. um, if on our channel we had nothing but bicycle videos, after that video stopped, you would see our other videos pop up as options to watch. So um, hopefully that answers your question. There might be... Yeah, this, this video actually did not come from our page. This is just a, a video that we found on YouTube and added it, so it won't have that option. But like he said, it, if, you did, if you did post a video from your channel, then it will show everything else that's, that's on that page. Mm -hmm. Uh, a couple more specific app questions. Uh, we talked about OpenTable very briefly. Uh, just to reiterate, that's a third-party website where you can, um, for example, if you're if you own a cafe or a restaurant, you can let your users go on your website and reserve a seat instead of actually calling you, and then it works through that way. And someone actually asked uh, if you're able to do that for room reservations, for instance, if you own a bed and breakfast or a hotel, um, and it it does work. You just need the OpenTable uh, account, like we said, with everything else, and should be able to to do just that. Okay, I think that might be all of the main questions. So um, once again, I will thank everyone and thank Hillary for, for presenting with me sure. today. Um, if you have any other questions, again, feel free uh, to contact us. We're all we're on Facebook, YouTube, like I said, uh, and you'll receive an email in the next few days when the video is available. You can comment questions on there uh, if you have any additional questions that you couldn't think of right now. So um, I'll just... Thank everyone once again. Uh, once again, I'm Daniel Young from Content Manager for One and One. Hillary Close was presenting with me. We had Jason answering questions. Hopefully he got to, I can see that he got to most of you, which is great. Uh, so thank you very much and see you at the next webinar.